Hello, my name's Toby Simpson. I'm the director of the Wiener Holocaust Library. And we've made this short film to show you the work we've been doing with the International Tracing Service Archive in Britain. The work that our researchers do is in incredibly important because there are still so many questions that remain unanswered. Every year, dozens of families approach us with inquiries, and this year's been no exception. They often come with a few fragments of information, perhaps a name or date of birth. They're trying to discover the truth about what happened to their relatives, and often that means discovering something profoundly significant about your own identity and how you relate to your own past. So our researchers need to approach the investigation seriously and use all of their skill to begin detective work to find out as much information as possible. But they also have to approach the inquiry with great sensitivity because for these families um, there's often a great deal uh, of emotional uh, weight to the information that they discover. Towards the end of last year we were approached by Avigdor Kohnheim who had never before researched the history of his family and he was keen especially to understand more about the life of his father. So our senior researcher Elise Bath took on the case and incredibly she was able to discover over 500 pages of documentation relating to Avigdor's story. I did get re reunited with my mother in 1959. It was hard to get any information out of her. And when I did, it was always, is this true or just something made up? She told me one time that uh, uh, she was uh, dating a, an SS officer. Well, even at my young age, that didn't make sense. So you is know? that what you were hoping for, really, to find direct evidence of what had happened with your family? You gave me so much information about my father. And unfortunately, he, he passed it to uh, oh, yeah, Auschwitz. Auschwitz, thank you. You know, my grandfather, Herman, he, he died at Auschwitz also. But again, it's another point that has clarified to me who my father was, who my grandfather was. I, I would just think for my dad's sake to know, to have gone all these years not really knowing who his father was. I mean, potential for him to be an SS officer versus a Jewish butcher. Like, there's a lot hanging on that, right, as, as someone who is a survivor of the Holocaust. To know that his parents loved each other and they were looking forward to a future family with him was super meaningful. And then also knowing that dad's father, like the reason for his arrest was he had a roast in his refrigerator and was trying to provide for his family. Even some things about his physical characteristics because we have no picture of, of Paul Stock. What sort of impact would you say this research has had on your family? I'll tell you, this information that you folks have come up with is just amazing to me. And it's cleared up so much stuff that had been heavy on my shoulders for 70 years or more. It's been fascinating for the library to work with Professor Dan Stone, who's been doing some groundbreaking work on the history of ITS. And he's bringing together for the first time a monograph that will reveal the history of the ITS in its context. I want to pay testament to the Wiener Holocaust Library. It's a really uh, an extraordinary institution. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, the ITS is not just an archive. Uh, and it's taken a long time for historians to realize that there is actually new material in there, that there's uh, extraordinary possibilities for research in there. Uh, and that's what I've been trying to show in, in the book that I'm writing. So. Part of the book is uh, to produce a, a history of uh, ITS as an institution, but, but only part. What I really want to do in the book uh, is to show how the material that's there can help us to think about aspects of the Holocaust and its aftermath in a new way. And in, by that, I mean, in particular, uh, a sort of grassroots 
a way of understanding the Holocaust from the bottom up, even if we're using perpetrator documents, you can follow the trajectories of individual victims through the camp system. 30 million documents um, is a, a, a remarkable amount. So what's in there? Uh, the first thing I think it, that's important is the, the wartime records, by which is meant records from the concentration camps, a huge amount of material relating to slave labor, the relationships between the SS and the many, many uh, German and Austrian firms which uh, used uh, concentration camp inmates as slave laborers. The other thing is the actions of the ITS itself, particularly in the first five years uh, after the war. When Christine first introduced me to the ITS archive, I discovered a document relating to a subcamp of Gross Rosen called Christianstadt, which was in itself, uh, I, mean, I was just randomly searching for stuff and came across this document, which was a, re a report written in the 1980s by a group of surviving uh, Czech women writing to ITS saying, um, we believe you don't know anything about this subcamp, and I certainly didn't know anything about it, and here's a report on it. To bring this history to life, the library curated a special exhibition about the history of ITS called Fate Unknown. With this exhibition, what we tried to do was marry the vast collections of the ITS archive with our own collections at the library, which speak to the efforts of people to try to find each other during and after the Holocaust. We've been really pleased this year to create a new travelling version of that exhibition, which will be showing across the UK in venues like the Holocaust Education and Learning Centre in Huddersfield and at the Linen Hall Library in Belfast. We are delighted to be able to partner with the Viner Holocaust Library for the 2020 Being Human Festival, culminating with an event at the Linen Hall Library later in the year. The aim for the event will be to help promote the International Tracing Service created to help find missing people after the Holocaust. And so to that end, we look forward to welcoming the leading Holocaust historian, Dan Stone, to Belfast, as well as a new exhibition, which we will display, and a hands-on family history event, which I know will be extremely popular amongst the people who visit and use the Linen Hall Library. I'm looking forward to hosting the ITS Roadshow at the Holocaust Exhibition and Learning Centre in Huddersfield. We're really pleased that the Vienna Holocaust Library is able to bring its expertise on tour to enable communities across the north of England to learn more and to find out how to research the sad fate of their own families. The library receives inquiries from all across the UK and actually all across the globe, uh, from Canada, Australia, Israel. And often the inquirers have just a few pieces of information for us to get started. And that's why our researchers need to have such a high level of skill to navigate this archive. One of the reasons people come to the library is because they feel they get a personal service. They develop relationships with our senior archive researchers who not only can navigate the uh, mechanics of the archive, but they also help them interpret what they're finding in a sensitive and empathetic way. I can't think of a more appropriate place to undertake this search than in the quiet, contemplative reading room of the Wiener Library. Surrounded by the materials and the expert knowledge often needed to make sense of what's being searched for. The library is Britain's largest collection relating to the Holocaust and the Nazi era. And for that reason, we're delighted that the UK government has committed to ensuring access to Holocaust collections, not only in the UK, but across the world. I'm Eric Pickles, I'm a member of the House of Lords. More than that, I'm a terrific fan of the FINA Library, and so is the British government. They support it because the FINA Library is at the very forefront of the best of innovative research. It's there to tell the story of the Holocaust, to educate people in this country and also throughout the world. But above all, the Wiener Library is about families, about reuniting families, about remembering that the victims of the Holocaust were living, breathing people, and that their memory is something that we will treasure. We're extremely proud of the work we've done at the Wiener Holocaust Library with the ITS Archive during the UK's year of chairmanship of the International Commission. We're not able to do this without your help. So please, if you're able to do so, visit our website find out more about what we do and consider making a donation. Thank you.